The scripture lesson comes from the book of Mark, chapter 8, verses 27 through 38. Jesus went on with his disciples to the village of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man undergoes great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel, I will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in their adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory. Word of God for the people of God. It's really a fascinating passage uh, to me, and it's uh, really filled with uh, a whole lot of things there that are very important to us. One of the things that we see in this passage is that Jesus will be asking His disciples, who do others say I am? And they go through a whole list of things that people are saying, and then He asks the pointed question, who do you say I am? It's at that point that Peter declares Jesus the Christ. Shortly thereafter, Jesus will begin telling about His death and resurrection. It's the first time He tells His disciples anything about what must take place. And after telling them, Peter will call Jesus aside and rebuke Him. We're going to take care of you. Don't worry about that. To which Jesus then in turn rebukes the very one who just called him the Messiah. And then, Jesus also offers a short discourse on the cost of discipleship spelled out here very clearly for us. And it's there I want to focus for just a little while today. Now keep in mind, by the time Peter declares Jesus the Christ. Jesus already has many followers. But I have to use that term loosely because many of the people who were following Jesus at that point were only following Him because they were enamored by all the miracles and even the authorita authoritative way that He would speak to his critics. Many of them thought Jesus was pretty sharp. He handled these critics very easily, it seems. And so they looked at Jesus and they thought, why not? This is a very interesting character. And so the emphasis for many of the people who were following Jesus at that point wasn't that they might learn and grow in their faith, but rather they were just intrigued by all that Jesus did. But as Jesus would ask His disciples earlier, who do you say I am? It raises questions for us today that I think are critically important. Like this, who is Jesus 
to me? Ask yourself that question. Who is Jesus to me? What does being a follower of Jesus mean to me personally? And ask yourself, how does being a follower of Jesus impact my life? You begin to look at these things a little differently, don't you, when you put yourself in the position of saying, what does Jesus mean to me? Now Jesus offers us some help in answering these questions. In part, he says, to be a follower of Jesus is to deny self. Now that doesn't mean for us that we're going to ignore all of our needs or even our wants. But when I think of denying self, It means that I look at my life and I say it's not all about me. Does that make sense to you? It's not all about me. We discover in looking at a passage like this, to deny self looks much different. It isn't necessarily about ignoring all of our own needs or anything like that, but perhaps it looks like this. We're able to put others ahead of ourselves. We're able to drop something long enough to reach out to someone else and meet their needs. That's what it means. Maybe it means for us that I don't always have to sit at the place of honor, but rather I count it an honor just to be there to rejoice in the accomplishments of others. Maybe it means I don't always have to be the first in line. Now I have to tell you, one of my pastor friends taught me a valuable lesson about getting to be first in the food line in any church. He says, what you do, you position yourself right at the table where the food is. And it's from there you say your prayer. And then you're automatically first in line. <laughs> I learned a long time ago, I don't need to be first in line. Because sometimes there may be others there that need to be ahead of me, that need to go first. There are so many things that this reminds us of. And it's not big things necessarily, it's not something so deep in a way, but being willing to deny ourselves just to allow someone else to go first is not a big deal. Or if you're able, maybe you park a little farther away so someone that isn't able to walk as well can park a little closer. Just simple little things like that can help us understand this whole concept of denying self. But Jesus says it's also about taking up the cross. Now, <clears throat> those of us in this room are fully well aware that ultimately, Jesus would literally bear the cross for the sake of every one of us in this room. When Jesus carried that large beam across his shoulder, which in the course of time he was no longer able to do so, you know who he had on his mind? He had every one of us in this room on his mind. He was carrying that cross so that we might live. And we must never forget that. 
So perhaps for us, the question becomes, what will we do for Jesus? How will we carry this cross each and every day? Now, it is entirely likely that none of us in this room will ever bear the weight of the beam of a cross on our shoulders. We may never lay down our lives for the sake of the kingdom, and yet every one of us in this room are called to bear the cross, which to me means that we give our lives to the kingdom that we give our lives every day for the sake of Jesus Christ. By that, it means that we are giving our witness to those who need Jesus, that they can see the love of Christ in us. It means that we are giving of our time and our talent and our energy for the mission of the church. It means offering encouragement and love to those we encounter. It means living our faith every day of our lives. That's what taking up the cross is all about. Living our faith each and every day. Amen. I'd rather give my life to Jesus and for Jesus any time than to forfeit my own soul, wouldn't you? Right. And that's what Jesus is saying here. We can be selfish or self-centered and we can focus only on ourselves and think it's all about me. Or we can turn that attention to those around us. Those who may have far greater needs than we do. Jesus doesn't say anything in this passage about being a disciple is easy, does He? He doesn't say that being a disciple or the cost of being a disciple is cheap. Nowhere. Sometimes it isn't going to be easy for us. Sometimes we will face uphill battles and challenges and all sorts of things. But let me tell you something. When you see a heart transformed because you've been faithful to Jesus, when you see a frown turn to a smile because you've been faithful to Jesus, or when you see someone who is ready to give up on life spring back to life because you are faithful to Jesus, or just a simple thank you for your kindness and your willingness to say, let me help you. Folks, it's worth it all, isn't it? It's worth it all. Give your life for the sake of the kingdom and never stop and never look back. You'll never regret it. And let me say this, wow, you will be blessed. Do you believe that? Amen. I do. I experience it every day. And so that's what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And so this day, I ask you to give your life wholeheartedly, not just sometimes, not just part of the time, not just when you feel like it, but give your life to Jesus wholeheartedly every day, and you will be blessed and you will be a blessing to everyone you meet. In a moment, we're going to sing a hymn, and when we do, maybe you're sitting there thinking, you know, I could do a lot more for my Lord. I could offer so much more than I have. And I want to live for Jesus like that every day. I want to be able to pick up my cross and share my faith and my love with those around me. So when we sing this hymn, if you feel led by God to pray, this altar is open for you to come and pray.
and allow you to just come and draw near to the one who gives life and gives it freely. Let us pray.